name is Ron Gorman. I'm Deputy Director of the Association of Independent Schools. Um, also very fortunate to be a board member of the Australian Children's uh, Laureate Foundation. And joining me today is Gabrielle Wong, our um, Children's Laureate for 2022 and 2023. Uh, welcome, Gabrielle. Thank you very much, Ron. It's lovely to be here. Great. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge that I am um, speaking from Wajuk Noongar land in, in Western Australia, and I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. I'd also like to give a shout out to the Foundation uh, for Learning and Literacy for the opportunity to uh, have this conversation with um, Gabrielle Wong, our Children's Laureate. Uh, the role of the Children's Laureate plays a very important part in the Australian um, landscape for our children and young people. Uh, it promotes, it speaks for, and really places the importance of reading before all of us as a nation. Um, our Laureates carry very important messages for us. Uh, our most recent Laureates, Morris Gleitzman, uh, talked about how story helped us understand ourselves and others better. And more recently, Ursula Dubasarsky said that we should read for our life. Gabrielle, your laureate slogan is imagine a story. Can you tell me more about that? Well, um, I, I believe that imagination is the, the foundation of, of human, humankind, really, because without imagination, we wouldn't, anything that's man-made um, has been imagined first. So um, imagination is for first and foremost, a, a, such a, a wonderful function. And the thing is that imagination is free and all you have to do, you don't have to pay any money for it. All you have to do is practice using your imagination. So as I travel around Australia, talking to children and to adults, um, I am talking about you, the use of the imagination and how it's important to keep practicing your imagination by reading, writing and drawing. And um, the other thing that I'm very passionate about um, in my role as Australian Children's Laureate is the role of diversity in children's literature. I think it's very important for um, children and for um, parents and uh, teachers to uh, give their children the chance to read diverse books with diverse characters by diverse authors. Um, and then also, um, of course, there's the primacy of reading that, you know, that we all need to read and, and we'll be covering that further in the conversation. Um, also, because I'm an illustrator, I um, like to, I talk about art and how visual literacy is is very important and when i'm my my um, tour around australia for the as the australian children's laureate is called follow the dragon tour because um where possible with the children i um, do a dragon drawing workshop with them and because you know after all every toddler can draw People say they can't draw, but that's but every they, everybody could draw when they were children, when they were very little, and just something happens. Maybe it's school, maybe it's the non-emphasis on visual um, literacy that that it gets, and it's and the importance is not placed on art in schools as it should be, I believe. So seeing the world with an artist's eye and using the right side of the brain as well as the left. I believe makes for a more balanced person. Uh, th thanks, Gabby. Um, those insights are, are really interesting, particularly, you know, the the idea that um, as as we move from childhood into adolescence and then in, into adulthood, you know, we lose some of that imagination and we lose that you know capacity to express ourselves in um, visual language, which I think is 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 really interesting. So those messages um, are really, really important for us to consider. So, so thank you for that. And I, I wonder if you could just talk a little bit more about, you know, how how the you know children have been engaged in the in the dragon uh, drawing exercises that you've done with them. 
Uh, well, um, they all love them because, uh, you know, I, what I do is I just do it line, line for line. So they, I don't, they don't have to copy my whole dragon. They just, I do the eye and then do another eye and say it looks like a six backwards or a six frontwards. And so by copying, I mean, I've done this workshop with adults as well. And they are, you know, there are many adults who say, I can't draw, but once they've um, shown um, a line by line, just copy me line by line, rather than thinking, oh, I have to do that whole dragon. You know, what am I going to do? I can't draw. Um, they turn out, they end up turning out with something, you know, that they're very pleased with. And I find this with the children, because many children in primary, I don't do it in secondary school, but in primary school, I do it all the time. And many of the children will say, um, you know, especially when they get to grade five, and especially grade six, they've decided that they're either drawers or artists or not artists. And, um, but once we do this dragon drawing workshop, they find that they are, um, they're pleased with their work. And, you know, that's sort of a little bit of encouragement and hopefully that might spark off something or, you know, a lot, lot of my books are about hidden potential. Maybe they have a hidden potential for art, but that's never been exposed before. Oh, I, I just love that you're uh, igniting and reigniting the imagination and the, the capacity for for our children to express themselves uh, through through drawing. That that's just wonderful, Gabby. I just want to move into having a, a chat about um, I, I guess your journey um, to being a, a successful author and illustrator. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your experience as a reader and a writer, both at school and beyond? Yes. Um, well, as a reader, um, as a reader and a writer, I, I was um, very challenged. So as a reader, I, I um, read extremely slowly. And um, I'm one of those people who has, has to, I don't know what, there's a special word for it, where you verbalise, where you have to hear yourself reading something so you ha I can't read in a in a room where there's tv on or is the, if there's music because I have to hear myself my own voice reading um, the words and so that makes for a very very slow reader and uh, so you know that reading was always a challenge to me uh, and as a writer well I couldn't write I mean I was I wasn't I wasn't good academic academically at school at all because I think the reading was a problem and also writing, um, I found it difficult. I, I never knew that I could write, not like, like unlike many authors, they know, they know since they're young that they you know, want to be an author or they just love to write. Um, I didn't discover that I could write until I was, um, until my children are in primary school. And as I said before, I talk about hidden potential in my novels. And I just, I had that hidden potential and it came out in a dream that I had one night. And um, back when I was young, um, and this sort of relates to the dream, but back when I was young, I was totally ashamed of being Chinese because there were, I was, I was brought up not, not knowing how to speak Chinese, not knowing anything about Chinese culture. And, um, you know, everybody, when I was young, we all wanted to be, you know, the default fault white person. And my greatest wish when I was young was, well, I had two greatest wishes. One was to be white and the other was to have a dog. And, um, and so I was ashamed of being Chinese. I couldn't hide this face, but I just, you know, I was very ashamed of my parents coming to school because they showed all my friends that, oh yes, she's Chinese and, and different. And I, couldn't there was no books about with people like me as the as in as any character in the book oh if there were characters in the book they were always ridiculed or they were you know there was no main there was, there was no Chinese who was the hero of their own story and so um that made me not feel like that I belonged in Australia but you know if I fast forward um I went through many years of angst like that racial prejudice and etc and and um but then I ended up learning Chinese going to China going to Taiwan living away in China and Taiwan for seven years 
and realizing that having more than one culture is a bonus is just such so enriching to the soul and when I discovered that I could write those are the things that I want to share with children when I'm in my novels um, because only through reading can you um, gain empathy by seeing through the eyes of the main character so um, and hopefully my books do that oh your, your books certainly do and I mean what an interesting journey from from um, thinking that you know you were perhaps awkward with the reading process and the writing process to being um, one of our greatest celebrated um, children's authors and illustrators and that unlocking potential I, I guess is a fabulous um, message for us all you know let's not lose hope and you know let, let's let's keep on on trying and, and, and aspiring to um, you know follow our dreams I, I think so thanks for sharing that Gabby that's um, you know really quite a, a fascinating um, life's story I guess I'd like to therefore focus on you know what would you like particularly for our children and young people across the nation when they do engage with story and literature and you've talked about diversity quite a bit um, can you add a little bit more about um, you know that, that the power of story and and you know having literature as part of a um, a, a growing experience growing up experience right well, um, you know, as I said, um, uh, oh, I suppose I can just, you know, I've, I've got an um, email here that I, um, that, that I've copied and pasted, and it's, it's from a 16-year-old, well, I'll, I'll let her explain it in her email. So I received this email several months ago, and um, I do receive, you know, a number of fan mails from, from, from people, but they're usually young kids. So this, this is a, an email sent to me by a, a girl called Rachel. And she says this, hi, I'm 16, so probably way older than the demographic that you're usually contacted by. I just remembered how important your books were to me as a fellow Chinese Australian kid who got bullied for that heritage. My school librarian introduced me to your books, reading about characters that looked um, like me, was so important to me growing up. And I just wanted to thank you for that. Because you, of you and your characters and your stories, I knew it wasn't bad to be Chinese in the hardest of times and that our culture is beautiful. I love to go to my suitcase, the Pearl of Tiger Bay, the Garden of Empress Cassia and the pearly Australian girl books very much as a kid. And I still do. I reread re them to this day. Sincerely, Rachel, a fellow Chinese Australian girl. So I think that um, that when I received that email, it moved me to tears because you, you know, as an author, I don't get that many emails. Um, I'm so happy that she expressed her feelings to me because, you know, we we put put our work out there as as authors and illustrators, but we don't get that you know, feedback that you know we've been that our stories have been inspirational. So on the one hand, you have a child, you know, who's like me, and Rachel, who's like me, who was ashamed of being Chinese, but was given the opportunity to read books where she. You know, people like her were, were the main character of the story. But then you have people who, you know, maybe are, um, have never, you know, don't have Chinese friends um, have, have, or, you know, have just lived, uh, you know, in the sort of the normal, normal Australian white life and um, therefore have, um, haven't come across this sort of situation where people, feeling of not the feeling of not belonging and so and as I said before by looking through the eyes of a, um, of a main character who is different from them who is of um, leads a diverse life a different life to them they can learn things about um, about the wider world and how other people feel and learn empathy that is oh, just just fascinating and again you know the, the the theme of the power of story is carried um, in in your thoughts, Gabby. But I thought Rachel's um, 
email is just beautiful and 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 generous that she reached out to say um you know how that um you know the, the stories that um you've gifted australia and the world with um can make a difference to young people in the email interestingly rachel picks up um on um very important person i think in in the in the business of schooling <clears throat> and that is the the school librarian um can you share some thoughts about the importance of school and community libraries and librarians? Right. <clears throat> um, I just, I am just so um, shocked um, that like, school, library, school libraries are, are just, you know, falling by the wayside and um, schools are giving them up. And uh, it just, it just, saddens me so much because the school library well, to me was really important um a place as as a sanctuary to go to you know if i felt like having some alone time um and the school librarian you know a, a school librarian knows each student and um and they also know each book on their shelves mm -hmm. and they can hand pick a book um, for a particular student to keep them interested and engaged in reading. I mean, how wonderful is that? Um, you know, and by and the schools that have disassembled the libra library, which I believe is the beating heart of a school, um, the ones that have disassembled the library and put the library books into individual classrooms, well, the, the class teacher um, does not have time to uh, and to read the books for, for, for a start. Um, they're busy, you know, teaching and doing other things. And um, I just think that it's such a shame. And it also shows, I mean, what does it show to the children? What does it tell the child that reading is not important, that libraries aren't important, that librarians aren't important? Um, so uh, school libraries, you know, as I said, that I would go there and, and um, use them as a sanctuary. Um, and, and many kids don't want to go and be playing in the playground. They might, you know, feel bullied or, you know, they they might just want to be by themselves. And the school library is a perfect place for that. Thanks for your thoughts on on libraries, um, Gabby. You know, I, I, I certainly think that we should be considering libraries as nation building um, um in in schools and you know the importance of them i really i'm i'm with you should not be underestimated because you know that and not only the, the 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 place to go and and explore story and books fiction non-fiction um have access to computers but also the relationship that um children and young people build with their librarian is is very special librarians really do know uh, every young person that they encounter so uh, i'm with you i think um you know th there's a campaign um, bubbling along there yeah we need we need to definitely yep let's let's make libraries the the nation builder that um that they are gabby just want to shift focus uh, a little bit um, we, we all know that reading is vital for opportunity and, and for, for successful lives. Can you just share some thoughts about how we uh, develop uh, readers from birth onwards? Right. Um, well, um, I really definitely think that um, um, to, you, we need to read, every parent, grandparent needs to read to the newborn. Um, I mean, I know this from experience because because I've got a two and a half year old grandchild, and I read to him since he was a, um, a couple of days old, and I, um, he was so, all the way through because I you know him he still loves books at at almost three he just he adore, adores books, and he would just lie in my arms as a newborn and he'd be fascinated just by the power no sorry by the sound of this voice you know. It, what you're doing when you're reading to a child when they're babies is your um, because many picture books we're talking about picture books here many picture book picture books are, are um, rhyming or have lyrical language and um, what you're doing is making them fall in love with 
um, with ryth the rhythm of language. Um, and as they get older, when they're um, toddlers, I, I believe that you should let the, the child um, choose their books that they want you to it, you to read to them because you know they have favorite books and it, and they just love to have those stories read over and over and over again and in this way they you know start to learn how to read themselves and um, I also believe that um, borrowing books from the library um, you know, um, when you take take the children to the library to story time and borrow books and let them again choose the books because always there's always books in the um, children's section of the of a public library where um, that are face out and let them choose and you know I I take my grandson to the lo to the library and let him choose and he's chosen books that are totally. Um, too old for him but it doesn't matter because what you want to do you don't want to discourage them from um, you know from books you want to encourage them to to like books and um, so yeah read to them from from when they're newborns I've, I've found that because I've got a, also got a grandson who's um, nearly one um, and that's that's the other one's brother and he doesn't like books nearly as much I mean he's not really interested and you know, I just don't think that he's had that um, that background of being read to from the time he was a little baby, um, which is yeah, a bit sad. But yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, you won't be surprised, Gabby. There's um, certainly a truckload of research that says that um, uh, children, particularly young children, that are read to, who get the opportunity to get a sense of of story and, and narrative and, and exposure to vocabulary will be successful at school. So, you know, it's a really, really important message. And, and we know it's important um, because the, the research certainly tells us. Um, and, you know, I share my joy of having a, a four-year-old grandson in my life. Um, I think I've turned him into a, a storyteller. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of fun. It, it's a great joy. Um, I, I guess building on that in terms of the importance of, um, you know, reading and, and story for very young children, when children enter school, what are some of the messages that um, you would like as, as the Children's Laureate um, to give to our teachers in both primary and secondary schools? Well, I suppose um, the thing that comes to mind is to read aloud, um, choose a class text, um, especially with uh, a school that's um, co-ed, a co-ed school. Pri I'm talking about primary here. Choose a class text and read it to the whole class. And in this way, not only are you engaging all the students in the story, and choose a, choose a book that's, of course, um, a page turner, so that they want, and, and of course you stop reading before and you know wait to the next day before they hear the, the next chapter. But um, th by doing this, you are not only um, sharing story with children who um, are good readers, but also children who find reading um, difficult because then they, everybody can enjoy the story at the same time. The other thing th that it does is you might choose a book where the main character and the front of the book has got a girl on the front cover. Now, um, you know, we all know that as teachers um, know that books with um, females on the front cover are not necessarily picked up from the library chosen by a, a boy because, you know, for, for, for whatever reason. Um, but girls will read books with boys on the front cover or girls on the front cover. So in order to um, encompass um, boys as well, if you read um, a class text, um, it's they don't think about the main characters being which gender, they just get involved mm -hmm. with the story. And I think this is really important. Um, and I know this from a fact because teachers have told me when they've read my books out in class that, you know, it doesn't matter. They, they're just, kids are just dying to hear the next chapter. Yeah. 
Uh, look, read aloud is a, a, it's a gift that teachers can 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 give their students. And on that, um, Gabby, you'd be interested to know a number of years ago, our Commissioner for Children and Young People um, gathered children and young people together for a, a summit and talked to them about what uh, they would like uh, their teachers to know about teaching, reading and writing. And the children in their table groups, every table group said they want stories to be read to them. So the experts in the room, the children and the young people, they really did vote with their voice and say, please, at school, please read to us, read aloud. It was a fabulous message. That's and, amazing. Um, yeah. shouldn't, shouldn't be a surprise, but it was a, a great, a great message. Yeah, and it's, and it also you know carried through to to high school. Yes, because, yes. Because um, high school kids, you know, as as you say, I mean, I, I listen to audio books now. You know, I'm a slow reader, so audio books I can get through lots of audio books. And and if the narrator is a good narrator, it's it's a joy to listen to. And after all, you know, oral storytelling um, came about you know, through human history way before we learned to write or we developed writing. And so it's almost like part of our DNA to be, to, to listen to stories. Yep. Again, the power of story. Gabby, just a, a, probably just a couple of questions to um, end our, our time together. Um, this question is actually about the role of literature um, in that it covers many aspects of our, our lives. But how do you think story through literature can help uh, young people in an ever increasingly complex world? Um, well, you know, it's, it, it is difficult now because, you know, um, because we do have a very, a, a world that's fraught with many, many problems. But um, I think, you know, through story, well, this is my hope anyway, through story, young people can be made aware of the frailties of humankind and learn, you know, how not to fall into the same pitfalls. And um, fiction does this wonderfully because, you know, you don't have to read a nonfiction book you can to get involved with um, how not to do something. And, um, you know, it's an optimistic view, I know, but you know, these young people who are readers today will be the leaders of the future. And so hopefully through story, they can gain um, wisdom. Um, and, you know, I, I also think that stories give young people um, skills to navigate life. It's like having a practice run through in your head. Then when the situation arises where you need to call on, you know, your inner strength, um, you've already read in a story about the, some of these coping strategies and hopefully, you know, that's been established as a pathway to get out of that situation. Um, I remember um, a mum telling me um, last year that her eight-year-old um, was scared to go to school and um, they were reading um, a book of mine called A Ghost in My Suitcase together. And um, there's one character in the novel called uh, Crazy Big Head. And the eight-year-old just loved, she, she fell in love with Crazy Big Head. I mean, the name, you know, she fell in love with the name, first of all, because he's a crazy guy in this book. Um, so one day when she, the, the next day, um, she, the, the daughter really didn't want to go to school. She was, you know, then the, the mum, and she had to get out of the car and go through the gate. And the mum's mum said, remember crazy big head? And then the, the, the little girl went skipping off and said, I'm crazy big head. And, you know, went confidently through that gate. So even at a young age like that, a child can learn, you know, um, uh, coping skills to overcome certain situations. I, I love the, the power of crazy big head that, <laughs> yeah. uh, that that young young person had through your story. And certainly the the thought that um, literature and story um, helps us uh, get through life and, and hopefully in a, in a very positive and, and productive way. Um, Gabby, just uh, a last question. What are, 
just a couple of big thoughts from you to leave with parents, caregivers, teachers of children, and young people. What's a couple of big messages you'd like to leave us with today? Um, well, you know, I think um, racism is, is a, a big issue in Australia and parents, caregivers and teachers can all help fight racism by guiding young people to read. Well, not only racism, but, you know, um, uh, people who, who are supposedly different to the norm. And so parents, teachers, librarians, caregivers can, um, can lead the, these children to read more books by diverse authors uh, about diverse characters. Um, I also believe that, um, um, you know, that, oh, this is, this is my little quote anyway, um, to nourish a child's imagination, encourage them to read diverse books by diverse authors, give them a sense of belonging and self-worth, let them draw and doodle and play, tell them to look up and out at the world and a mighty forest will grow inside. So, you know, I just think that that's to, in order to encourage children to just, just be engaged with the world. And that's not my last message. My last message is, you know, the, the, the power of libraries. So my hope for the future is that the powers that be realize that school libraries and librarians are vital to our children's well-being. And that they will be the wonderful sanctuaries of learning that they were for us, Ron. Okay. Gabby, thank you. And I, I love that, um, you know, we, we have great opportunity to nourish our, our children and, and young people. Gabrielle Wong, Australian Children's Laureate, thanks for the chat today. It's just been delightful. It's been my pleasure. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you.